So we'll understand vision defects. Now there are various forms of vision defects that are seen. Uh, the most common is myopia and hypermetropia that you have uh, commonly heard of. But before that, let's understand our vision range. So with one eye, so if I close one of my eyes and I try to see with one of the eyes, it's it's understood that you have a vision of nearly 150 degrees that is covered. However, when you focus with both the eyes, you have a vision of 180 degrees that is covered. Now, if I shut one of the eyes and I just observe through one eye, the image that is formed is two dimensional. With both of the eyes, you have a three dimensional view that could be seen for a image because our brain combines those few different images that are there, which are centimeters apart and uh, extra information is being derived to give it a depth view or a three dimensional view. Now, as we said, what are the common defects? So first defect that we talk about is myopia. Remember, myopia is also known as nearsightedness. That means the near vision is fine. There is problem with the distant vision. So don't get confused why myopia is called as nearsightedness. It's very, very clear. Myopia is called nearsightedness because the near vision is clear, but there is difficulty with the distant vision. Again, when it is myopia, what happens is in usual circumstances, let's say you have an object here and you have the eye here, the image should be formed on the retina. But in the case of myopia, image forms before the retina. So the correction is used to adjust that formation of image back onto the retina and therefore what is used you have the lens that is used what kind of lens is used you have the concave lens that is used now concave lens is used for distant vision however when you have convex lens it is used for uh, near vision so distant vision you have concave lens repeat again and for near vision correction you have the convex lens that is used. So near vision, if you are have, having problems with near vision, it is known as hypermetropia and that means farsightedness. As the name suggests, farsightedness. So the images in the far off areas are clearly visible, but the near images are not clearly visible. And again, if I take the same example, I have an object here, the eye here. Technically, the image should fall on the retina, but when you have farsightedness or hypermetropia what happens is image falls back of the retina so the correction is required to bring the image back to the retina and for that you have a convex lens convex lens is thick at the center part and the concave lens is thinner at the center okay so we, we have understood this in the section on the structure of the lenses in the light class the next important correction that we say is presbyopia now presbyopia usually occurs with increasing age where the negative power or the nearsightedness starts to reduce myopia starts to reduce and hypermetropia starts to increase and therefore it's required to have a bifocal lens bifocal lens is a correction where the upper part of the lens helps you to see far off objects so the upper part of your spectacles would have con cave lens however the lower part of your spectacles would help you to see the near objects and that would have the convex lens so that is why we call it a bifocal lens you have both the concave and the convex lenses under one uh, pair of glass that you have and that's what is presbyopia so these are the three major terms that you must understand i repeat again myopia, hypermetropia and presbyopia. Presbyopia where you have vision with both problems with both distant and near vision. Hypermetropia when you have clear distant vision or farsightedness but you have problems with near vision. Myopia where you have nearsightedness that means clear near vision but problems with distant vision. So that is a that are the various vision defects that are seen. The next important concept that we understand is eye donation. Now of uh, the global population, it's believed more than 35 million population in, only in the developing parts of the country are suffering from visual impairedness and of which 4.5 million of the 
population suffers from corneal blindness which could be corrected if one eye is donated there could be four corneally blind people that could be treated now this could be because the different part of the eye could be used in different cases and therefore one eye uh, one pair of eyes that is donated can give life to uh, four corneally blind people the next important thing that we understand is how does this donation process takes place so immediately after death within four to six hours you would have the recovery of the eye that needs to be done and this needs to be preserved so this could happen either at uh, the home or at the hospital it takes merely 10 to 15 minutes and if the deceased is ready to donate the eye or it has uh, put that in his will uh, then definitely uh, the process can go ahead uh, people with acute illnesses in the form of AIDS or any kind of hepatitis that a person is suffering from le uh, leukemia or cholera or meningitis or any form of communicable disease cannot donate the eye others who are not suffering from any of the major illnesses or critical illnesses can definitely uh, go for eye donation uh, eye donation can uh, be done to any age group and any gender so irrespective of that eyes could be donated uh, so those are some of the important concepts that we have understood in this lecture we would be covering many more interesting sections stay tuned have a wonderful day ahead